Just thanks. <laughs> Members of Right Honourable, the Lord Mayor. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, the 11th of December 2018. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed, or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. I've also been advised that a photographer may be present during the proceedings tonight. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Kaurna people of the Adelaide Plains and pay respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land and acknowledge that they're of continuing importance to the Kaurna people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. The Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. Will all present stand in silence in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of our country at sea, on land and in the air? Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you, members. There are no apologies or leave of absence tonight. That takes us to item six, which is confirmation of minutes from the 27th of November 2018. Uh, could I have uh, a mover that the meeting uh, minutes of the meeting held on the 27th of November be taken as read and be confirmed as an accurate record of proceedings? Thank you, Councillor Abiad. Uh, could I have a seconder? Sorry. Uh, Councillor Hyde. Uh, are there any corrections to the minutes? There being no corrections, I now ask you to vote in favour of the motion to confirm the minutes. All in favour? Thank you. That is carried. Um, item 7 tonight uh, is a public forum, deputations. Uh, we have one person, Ms Jan Chorley, the CEO of uh, Australia Day Council South Australia, has registered to be heard in relation to the strategic direction of the Australia Day Council of South Australia and Australia Day in the city in 2019. Uh, members, please note a deputation request was also received from Ms Kelly Henderson in relation to the acknowledgement of council, APLA appointments and a motion without notice for the Adelaide Oval Hotel which I have declined as it was received after the deadline of Monday at 12 p.m. prior to this meeting. Ms Chorley, uh, could you please come forward and address the council? We have up to five minutes. Thank you, 
Thank you, Lord Mayor. Good evening. Um, I would like to firstly acknowledge uh, that we are meeting on the land of the Ghana people and also to pay my respects. I also want to sincerely thank the City of Adelaide for the opportunity of presenting to you this evening very briefly. The Australian Day Council of South Australia is an independent, not-for-profit, membership-based organisation with a vision to inspire national pride and spirit to enrich the lives of all Australians. Our chair is Councillor Hussam Abiyad, um, and the Australian Day Council works with and for the community to unite the people of South Australia to celebrate our excellence in our communities and to discuss our national identity. And just for some, perhaps some new people, um, new elected members. We are responsible for the Australian of the Year Awards, the Citizen of the Year Awards um, in partnership with local government, the PSM Medal, Women Hold Up Half the Sky in partnership with the Office for Women, the Milk Award for Languages and Cultures. And I think all of these awards highlight and shine a light on some of our most inspiring citizens, and I'm sure you'd agree. At our core, we are about promoting the meaning of Australia Day and deepening community belonging. Our organisation's focus is on the story stories of our nation, commencing with our First Nations peoples, our migrant refugee stories and our, our ancestral connection to our cultural heritage. We conduct Australia Day in the City as a free event in partnership with the City of Adelaide that acknowledges Australia's National Day. It's one of the largest Australia Day gatherings in South Australia, and the partnership we've enjoyed with the City of Adelaide enables South Australians to come into the heart of the city from wherever they live, and this continues to grow each year. In addition to the Australia Day uh, in 2018, we've had a whole year of engagement with communities. We've hosted over eight signature events within the city or very close to the CBD with several thousands of people participating overall. And these new innovative events are focused around inspiring South Australian women um, an event called In Conversation with Changemakers, a partnership with Catherine House and Hutt Street, the Australia of the Year Luncheon, and Australia a Country of Opportunity uh, Interactive Forum focusing on our migrant and refugee stories. We've utilised many of the city's venues and created strong economic and social development outcomes. Over the last three years, the City of Adelaide have funded our organisation for Australia Day in the city to the value of about 170000 per annum. And over this period, over these three years, about 9,800 people from diverse peoples have participated in the Australia Day Parade. About 37,000 people have watched the parade and over 112,000 people have, that's about 35,000 people each Australia Day, have participated in the event. It is our aim for the 2020 parade and beyond to invite all the City of Adelaide's new citizens and uh, conferred during the year to march in the parade and to be welcomed by the whole community as new citizens. In 2019, we are enhancing Australia Day in the city through the following key focus areas. First, we will commence with a smoking ceremony in the morning in Elder Park, followed by, um, throughout the evening, a, a concept called Kamunka Mukapinga Tapinga, meaning together, remember and recognise, which aims to tell the story of and the history of iconic South Australian, Ab Australian Aboriginal people, both past and present, through projection mapping technologies. This large-scale temporary projection onto trees in order part will create a glowing nighttime spectacle that will draw people into the city to learn to engage with our Aboriginal pe people and history who've made a significant impact to our community. There'll also be a water screen feature and an illuminated projection emerging from the River Torrent. We recognise for many Aboriginal people, as I'm sure you do, that Australia Day is a reminder of our past and our council, our, that is the Australia Day Council, is committed to working in partnership with Ghana elders, Aboriginal leaders, Aboriginal organisations and performing artists to shape these key events elements of the Australia Day 2019 to ensure inclusion is embedded in all of our programs and activities leading up to and throughout the day. So, we'll, so that will be a key part of the day, uh, as well as a, um, 
uh, uh, the parade, a concert, and finish it with a magnificent fireworks display. And lastly, I would like to just um, reinforce the above that I've just mentioned aligns with the City of Adelaide's strategic objectives towards sustainable growth, inclusive of all members and accessible, iconic and celebrated for its distinctive heritage and cultural values. The alignment is also exemplified in, in celebrating of Australia Day in a strong and resilient city. And, and I guess finally, the overall brand of the City of Adelaide will be a community open to all people from all countries and all walks of life. And thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jordan. Thank you very much. <coughs> Members, um, item eight, uh, there are no petitions to receive. Uh, item nine, uh, there is no advice from the Adelaide Parklands Authority or reports from other committees tonight. Um, members, my verbal report this evening, um, it's been a, a busy few initial weeks for the council and I'd like to thank you all for what's been a really positive start to the term. Um, in the recent weeks, I've met with senior Adelaide Def um, Australian Defence Force Officer Edinburgh, Edinburgh Defence Precinct Air Vice Marshal Joe Iversi and was introduced to the incoming Air Commodore Phil Gordon. Um, I met with the Honourable Stephen Marshall, MP, Premier of South Australia, the Honourable Michelle Lensink, MLC, Minister for Human Services, the Honourable Mick Gentleman, MLA, Minister for Planning and Environment for the ACT Government. Um, I farewell to the outgoing Consul General of India, who sadly missed India's performance at the cricket. Um, I met with Ms Louise Miller-Frost and Mr David Pearson from the Don Dunstan Foundation and Sarah Gunn from GoGo -Go Foundation. Uh, Peter Joy, the Chair for the Rundlemore Authority uh, and Mr Manuel Ortegoza, the CEO of Global Intertrade. Um, I attended the official launch of the Innovation Incubator Startup and Growth Hub at Lot 14 the Australian of the Year luncheon, pitch at Palace on tour at the University of Australia, Place of Courage campaign launch, A Spirit of Woman, the Adelaide Motorsport Festival, the Merry Widow Opera at the Adelaide Festival Centre, uh, the 13th Annual Ruby Awards, the opening of An uh, Anglicare South Australia's new Magdalen Centre, uh, the Women's Mayoral Lunch hosted by the Honourable Michelle Lensink and the Honourable Vicky Chapman MP, and the launch of the Adelaide Central Market book, Stories, People and Recipes. I also uh, spoke at the opening of the Gladys Elphick Nanunga uh, Park 25 opening, the Adelaide Fringe Festival 2019 program launch, the Adelaide Motorsport Festival in Guja Street uh, for the Guja Street party, uh, the lighting of Victoria Square, Tanta Nanga Christmas tree lighting, uh, Chinatown Christmas function, the naming ceremony for Josie Aegis Park, Wicker Park New Wirra, which is Park 22, 88 O'Connell Street Twilight Markets, and the City of Adelaide Christmas Gala Concert at the Adelaide Town Hall. And today I hosted the uh, Lord Mayor's Christmas Lunch in the Banquet Room at the Town Hall, and thank you very much to all members who were in attendance. Uh, could I please have a mover and a seconder for the motion to receive the verbal report? Councillor Abiad, seconded by Councillor Hyde. Uh, I'll now ask you to vote on the motion. Those in favour, thank you. That's carried. Um, Councillors, uh, with uh, the reports that we have tonight. I note that we have um, several members of the public joining us tonight. So I'm going to, with your um, permission, bring two items forward, uh, being item 12.10, uh, which is the Treasury Policy Revision Paper, and item 16, which is Motions Without Notice. So. We will go straight to, oh, sorry, sorry, my, forgive me, item 11, councillors' reports. Um, forgive me, I missed one. Um, <coughs> yes, can I have a councillor to move as printed? Thank you, councillor Moran, second by councillor Abiad. 
Uh, does anyone have a report? No. Uh, Councillor, do you wish to sum up on the motion? Summed up. Summed up. I'll now ask you to vote. Those in favour? Thank you. Carried. Apologies, members. I'll now go to uh, those reports. So we'll go first to item 12.10, which is the Treasury report. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, could I have a councillor move, councillor Sims, and a councillor to second? Councillor Martin. Councillor Sims, would you like to speak to the motion? It's very, uh, just very briefly, um, Lord Mayor, I don't want to talk uh, for too long a period tonight about this because I recognise a, a few matters on the agenda. But I do want to highlight the inclusion in the uh, revised Treasury policy of a clause on divestment. I note that it states subject to compliance with legislation, Treasury objects and parameters and the competitive return, the City of Adelaide will preference investment securities and financial institutions which do not invest in the fossil fuel industry. And I note administration's statement that they are confident that this can be implemented with no detrimental impact to financial operations. So if implemented tonight, Lord Mayor, this will be a win for our environment and a win for the council. If passed tonight, this will be a real milestone for the city of Adelaide, as we become the first council in the state to divest from fossil fuels. And I hope that what we're doing here is setting the agenda for other councils around the state to follow. We will, of course, join a growing network of councils around the country, 32 in total, including the City of Melbourne, the City of Hobart and the City of Fremantle. While council doesn't have any direct investments in fossil fuels, with a multi-million dollar operating budget, where we do our banking has a big impact. The City of Adelaide currently banks with the National Australia Bank and the NAB continues to lend money to fossil fuel projects, which in turn significantly increase CO2 emissions. And in fact, uh, since uh, 2008, the NAB has been a huge contributor to the fossil fuel industry in terms of financing those projects. This addition to our project, ensure, uh, to our policy, ensures that council is putting its money where its mouth is, sending a strong message to other councils to divest from the fossil fuel industry, an industry that is destroying our planet. I'm a big believer in the Pantene effect in social change, Lord Mayor. It doesn't happen overnight, but it does happen. And uh, so it is the case with this motion. Because of course, I first proposed that we divest from fossil fuels back in April 2015. And Councillor Martin pursued this issue in August of last year. And I do want to thank Councillor Martin for his leadership on this issue. And I also want to acknowledge the work of many environmentalists who've been fighting for councils such as ours to take action over a long period of time. I encourage councillors to get behind this policy so that we can really cement Adelaide's place as one of the world's great green cities. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Martin. I reserve my right, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to speak to the motion? Councillor uh, Kerr. I, I wish to uh, move an amendment to the motion, Lord Mayor. Um, so I move that the uh, motion be amended uh, to be to read the same as is, but with the addition uh, at the end of uh, part two of the words excluding all reference to giving preference to banks and other financial agencies which do not invest in the fossil fuel industry. Sorry, Councillor Kerr, could yeah, you just read? Um, excluding all reference to giving preference to banks and other financial agencies which do not invest in the fossil fuel industry. Sorry, we're just checking uh, um, whether we can accept it. So if you have a seconder for that amendment. 
Thank you, Councillor Abiyad. Would you like to speak to the amendment? Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, apart from the fact uh, that the term fossil fuel is too broad, natural gas is a lower emissions technology uh, than coal. And the state and federal governments have policies which directly target uh, the issue, carbon emissions, uh, rather than uh, the type of fuel. And apart from the problematic question of whether we should be telling banks how to run their business, there is also a significant buried cost to this provision. For example, if a bank loans money to a trucking company, um, does that make them an investor in fossil fuels? Um, if it's a taxi company, are they an investor in fossil fuels? So there is clearly a potentially significant uh, administration cost in defining and investigating these matters. Um, this is money that instead of being spent on administrative churn, we could, for example, spend uh, on low emission LED lights, which would provide a continuing reduction in emissions. So um, that's the end of my argument. Councillor Abia, did you wish to speak? Would any other members like to speak? Can I speak on the amendment? You can speak on the amendment. Thank you, Councillor Sims. And not surprisingly, Lord Mayor, I don't support this amendment, and um, I encourage all councillors to uh, vote against uh, this amendment, which really, I think, would be squibbing on a huge opportunity for this council to show some leadership. And let me point out and reinforce the point that I made earlier. Uh, in adopting this position, a council won't be out of pocket in any way. Um, so it's not going to be something that's damaging our financial position. In fact, I would argue it enhances our position in the global market as a number of councils across the country have taken this step. We talk about wanting to be a carbon neutral city. We talk about being one of the world's leading green cities. This is an opportunity for us to put our money where our mouth is. We're a significant consumer of financial services. We have a right to make a decision about where we do our banking. And of course, that, we should, that should be informed by the financial relationships that uh, these banks have. If we vote against this motion today, I think we're setting a very bad, uh, sending a very bad message to other councils across the country. And we're once again squibbing on an opportunity to show some leadership. This has been debated a hell of a lot over the last few years. I mentioned before, I put this forward back in 2015. Councillor Martin put it forward uh, back uh, in August of this year. Let's not kick this off down the road again. Let's get it done. The community wants us to take some leadership on this. And uh, I encourage you to vote down Councillor Kira's motion. Are there any other speakers? Uh, Councillor Martin and then Councillor Dr Donovan. Thank you. Um, uh, look, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I, uh, Councillor Kira, uh, I know, hasn't been privy to all of the discussions that have occurred on this for the past uh, four years or so. But this matter has been seriously debated and considered throughout the organisation, not only by this organisation, but, but by capital cities, including Hobart and Melbourne. It's been through this chamber. It actually went to the Audit Committee of the City of Adelaide. And let me tell you at the Audit Committee, you can't pull the wall over those guys' eyes. Uh, these hardened auditors sat there and said, yes, that makes sense. They endorsed this proposal. They endorsed it on the basis of the information that's available that suggests that this organisation will not invest in banks or financial institutions um, which invest in fossil fuels only where there is a competitive return on offer. So there is no loss to the taxpayer, to the ratepayer. It will be only where there is a competitive return. And additionally, there's no, uh, no big deal about identifying which investments are the ones which are most appropriate. Standard and Pause, which is one of the world's biggest rating agencies, has its own chart. It's published daily. You can go online and it is called the Index of Fossil Fuel Free Investments. It lists the major banks which provide investments which they guarantee are free of fossil fuel investment and it provides details of the interest rate available along with details of the credit rating of the institution. So in every respect this is now something of the norm throughout 
not only local government in Australia, but throughout the world. In fact, some of the world's biggest companies are proponents of this policy. Um, I guess for me, the thing that is the clincher about this, uh, this policy is that it is consistent with everything that this council does. We're looking about looking after the ratepayers' money. But we're also committed to a range of initiatives in our strategic plan, including our green initiatives. And at, at the peak, at, at the head of all of that, is our obligation to become a carbon neutral organisation by 2020. And part of that process is not only talking the talk, but walking the walk. And this is one of the ways we can actually walk the walk. We should endorse this. Uh, if we delay it, we will look diminished in the eyes of people who regard us as a best practice organisation. And in the, in the wake of this having been tested by our auditors, our auditors have agreed to this, in the wake of our organisation saying it will not do it unless there is a guarantee of a competitive return. And in the additional condition that only 25% of any available funds will ever be invested in fossil divested fuel investments. It's a no-brainer. Councillor Dr Donovan. Very briefly, I similarly do not agree with the amendment. Um, I, I think very briefly that the uh, the costs are not borne by the organisation in terms of the technicalities of looking into what is defined as a fossil fuel or not. So it's a good point and that there is some murkiness around that, but we don't need to consider that those decisions have been made and those costs are not borne by the City of Adelaide to look into that because that has been already done. Things like the LEDs also and other carbon neutral initiatives we are also already doing. So it's a good point, but those, those um, uh, initiatives are already underway in addition to this. So I think this is a good addition to our current carbon neutral program, so I would not endorse the amendment. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any other councillors wish to speak? Councillor Hyde. Uh, I just have some questions for administration from Lord Mayor. Um, so there must have been a body of work done around what is a competitive rate. Um, can I just get some guidance on what is a competitive rate? So uh, for example, what is the what is the what would be the opportunity cost? I'm just curious, and I'd like to unpack that a little bit more because I'm very conscious that we're taking on a lot of a lot of uh, debt in order to fund important capital works in the city. So. Councillor Hyde, do you need to be speaking to the amendment at this point? Oh, I, well, I'd, I'm speaking. I'd like to clarification on that point. I am yes. To the CEO. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Three, Lord Mayor. Um, in the context of this um, report, the, a competitive item would be where we would literally seek a competitive bid tender or quote process, and we would seek to have no financial disadvantage to council based on that process. So, was there was there a body of work done in comparing loans that we currently have or, or might take on in the future, and, and comparing whether or not there was a difference in in the interest rate we would be paying on those loans? Um, through you, Lord Mayor. In relation to the loans, the current process around the fossil fuel divestment is about investment. It's not actually about our borrowings in the present context of this, from my understanding. Um, in relation to our deposits, at the moment we're not in a position to, to have any of those, and so we're actually in, not in a position to actually tend to have a competitive environment with them. If we saw it going forward, we would actually seek to get multiple bids from individual banks, including those of different um, ratings, mm -hmm. and then we would actually, based on that, look to see which offered the, a comparative rate so that we could actually be in no disadvantage. So, so we haven't we haven't actually looked at we haven't actually compared these these sorts of these sorts of loans. Or... Sorry, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, when you uh, look at um, institutions uh, taking deposits, it's actually just a, a pretty simple process of bringing around um, banks or other financial institutions who are looking for deposits uh, at that period of time, and it's a short-term deposit. So it's a very simple process of um, just seeking um, what what is on offer on the day. It's not a massive uh, expenditure of time. Okay. Um, I suppose uh, in light of that, well, actually that answers that answers all my questions. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Are there any other speakers to this motion? Councillor Albion. 
Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, look, just, I mean, there are two pieces to this. Um, another one that's very important, and we're not talking about it, which is the enable the council to meet the strategic planning objectives, and we're revising our, our treasury policy to address that issue, which is a, a very big issue um, over the long-term financial plan and discussion. I'm not here to argue the merit of fossil fuel investment or not. We know that fossil fuels has proven that it has an impact on the environment. That's not what I'm what I'm negotiating or talking about. I still have a concern around cost. I know we keep talking about minimal, but the other thing I've just heard, uh, which is very clear, uh, is that we will not be 100% fully divesting anyway, because there will still be institutions in which we have loans with and other investments with, which will keep our money with them and will keep operating with them, uh, despite the fact that they may be supporting companies that um, that are involved in fossil fuels. Is that correct? Or are we completely divesting when we're talking about divesting? CEO? I need to get clarity on that. Thanks, Tracy. <laughs> through you, Lord Mayor. Um, actually, all our borrowings are currently through the LGFA. They provide a very competitive rate, and they, um, if they don't have enough uh, deposits from other council, they borrow through the South Australian Government Financing Authority, and they in turn borrow through a panel of various financial institutions. So you are correct. Through our borrowings, you would have exposure to uh, wherever those financial institutions have sought to seek their funds from. But our borrowings are through the LGFA. Yeah, but we don't know where that money comes from, right? Correct. Um, so it will come either from other councils, or if they need to borrow, they'll borrow from the South Australian Government Finance. <laughs> so if someone, if it comes from another council or it comes from the government where they're taxing or collecting rates of a business that trades in fossil fuel, mm -hmm. how far does that go? That's what I'm trying to understand. Because, you know, we can have a nice phrase that says, we are divesting from fossil fuels, everyone goes home and sleeps very happy and we've solved the world's problem. Uh, or we truly do it, um, and I just don't think this delivers the truly do it bit. Uh, for me, it still seems that uh, we are not sure where our money's coming from uh, because we don't know if it's involved in fossil fuel trade or not. Uh, that some banks we may use may uh, be involved in supporting organisations of fossil fuel, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But in essence, does that mean on the acceptance of this? Uh, if tomorrow uh, we agree, uh, will we go and change all our FPOS machines to go to another bank? So, I mean, is, that how, is that what it means if we're not going to be with MAP? Oh, I just want to understand the operational impact. On yeah, that's so, so operationally, um, the change in the policy refers to investment of surplus funds. So it isn't in regards to where our borrowings are, um, are sourced from. Yeah. It also isn't in relation to our transactional banking contract, because at the moment that still runs for a number of years of before that contract expires. At the time of that uh, contract expiring, we look, would look to put in the procurement um, process the opportunity to invest. Right. Yeah, to, to have that transactional banking through other financial institutions, but currently the change in the Treasury policy is in relation to investments of surplus funds. So what would that impact in our budget as a whole? We're talking 10%? So, so currently we're not, our long-term financial plan is in a borrowings position, yeah. so we don't have that opportunity to look at where the surplus funds would be. So this is nothing, I mean, this is what it is. So basically $180 million of our budget that we'll keep investing with NAB, keep using FPOS machines with NAB that transact with fossil fuels, um, we'll keep using money from the OGA and other councils that potentially may rate or tax people that are involved with fossil fuels. And none of the gentlemen that spoke about this care, um, and they, <laughs> that care to ask the question about how does our organisation 100% divest uh, and move in that direction? Because it seems to me we're sitting at the fringe and we're spending a significant amount of time debating issues where we're talking about the 1%, the 10%, uh, where if we want to address the problem, let's address the problem. Um, so I think there's a big missing piece here, and I've spoken about this at length, I've never been supportive of this, um, and for me it's really important uh, that we look at the real cost and the real change, not a media statement, not a headline, that we look at making a real impact in this world uh, to make a long-term change and not a 1% change of loans that we don't have right now and we may have in the future. So let's change our FPOS machines, let's change everything if that's the direction we want to take. Otherwise, we're just being hypocrites. So I'll leave it that. that. That's for sure. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, Councillor Martin, you've already spoken to the no, woman. I, I wish to ask a question. Okay. Um, can, can the administration provide some clarity? Because there's a lot of confusion here. We're talking about FPOS machines. We're talking about borrowing money. This policy is related entirely to the investment of funds. Is that correct? Not, not to FPOS machines, not to borrowing. 
It is a specific part of our Treasury policy. Uh, yes, that's correct. Thank you. And if we were to engage in that discussion about EPOS machines, about borrowing money, that would, would require a whole separate discussion and a separate process audit committee and the like. Is that correct? That's correct. It'd be in much more detail. It would be much more detail. Okay, so the, the simple thing we're being asked to do is to approve this policy in respect of investments only. Thank you. I think that clears it up. Members, are there any other speakers to the amendment? Councillor Kerr, would you like to sum up? Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, just really briefly, look, um, I don't see that this is actually about um, being carbon neutral. Let's, let's not conflate the issues. This does not impact our capacity as a council to achieve carbon neutral. Uh, neutrality. We, this is, that is about the fuel that, that, uh, and the energy that goes into council business and uh, delivering council services. This is specifically about uh, uh, a vague targeting of banks uh, through, um, through our investment policy. And if you think this doesn't actually make any difference ultimately on bank costs and bank interest rates, I, I would humbly suggest uh, we're, we're mistaken. These sorts of things do add up. Um, I haven't heard the major issues with this provision being addressed. That is that uh, it is an incredibly vague term. Fossil fuels is an incredibly broad term. There's natural gas, there's coal, there's different emission levels. Those emission levels are targeted by state and federal government policy. They directly target the problem, which is emissions, not the type of fuel. That is already in place by the major levels of government. We already have that. This is th th that has not been addressed. That remains a problem, and there is a churn within this uh, provision because it, is, because it is so vague. And what what is investment in fossil fuels? We don't know. But a trucking company, a taxi company, not to reiterate, but 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 that's it. It's a bad provision, and I humbly submit that it ought to be amended. Thank you, Councillor Kerrow. There being no further debate, I'll ask you to vote on the motion, please. Those in favour of the amendment, sorry. Those in favour. Uh, that's carried. Division. Division's been called. Councillors, a division has been called on the motion. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Shame. Oh. Councillor Abraham Zadeh, Councillor Abiad, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kerr, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Knoll. So I declare that carried this motion as amended. So So, would anybody like to speak to the motion as amended? If not, uh, I'll ask you to vote on the motion as amended. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Before I move to the next item, which will be item 16, motion without notice, um, uh, as much as I am short-sighted, I do spy in the um, seating up there former Deputy Lord Mayor Plumridge and former Councillor Tony Williamson. Welcome to the Chamber. It's lovely to see you both. Uh, we'll go to item 16, motions without notice. Lord Mayor, I have a motion without notice that this council strongly opposes the Oval, Adelaide Oval Stadium Management Authority plan to build a hotel on the parklands and ask the Lord Mayor to immediately write to the Premier and to the members of state cabinet setting out council's position on the development while also foreshadowing the inclusion of the matter on the agenda of the next meeting of the Capital City Committee. Thank you, I'll look for a seconder. Councillor Sims. Councillor Moran. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I, I will be brief because I have voiced my. Oh, Sorry, Councillor no. Yeah, only on, on, on a potential uh, perceived uh, conflict of interest. I just wish to express that uh, um, that I feel that I uh, 
you know, clearly will be able to segregate my duties as a representative of the council um, from, you know, and uh, to deal with this in an impartial and unbiased manner, um, you know, and uh, act in the in the best interests of the uh, ratepayers and the and the electors. Um, and uh, that I, I see that uh, you know that it sort of has been on the previous occasions that I've shown that I've been independent in my um, you know in my views and express those in, you know about my best interest for the local council. Thank you, Councillor Connell. That's what are you doing? You're leaving? Staying? No, no, staying. staying. Are you voting? Yes. So, would you like to ask the administration for a comment on that? You've done already? Yeah. Right. yeah. Seems like a clear, clear conflict to me. But uh, anyway, it's your call. Um, the reason that I've had to change the motion uh, from um, mentioning um, less or um, refusal or withholding it is because um, Mr. Rao, in his wisdom, made all buildings on the park grounds category one which means that it's so complying and so within the plan that it doesn't even need planning approval or lessor approval. Now that was so wrong when he did it because really clearly in most people's minds, every building on the parkland should be category three, which means that you have to consult with the public and they can take out third party appeal rights against any decision. Now, clearly building a house on a suburban block or a block um, is less of public interest than building large buildings on our park land. So I think the future this council is going to have to tackle that again and see if we can get it back to being a Category 3. And therefore there's lots of checks and balances. There are no checks and balances now at all. Um, the purpose of the motion, of course, is to show that the government, show the government just how, how wrong we feel this is and now also from the enormous feedback that I think most of us have had how wrong our ratepayers and not just our ratepayers people from all around the state have expressed their their uh, horror at a commercial building being built on the parklands now the government said it's not the not the parklands, it's the Oval. The Oval is built on the parklands and the Oval we, we respect, uh, we welcome it, it costs a lot of money and we had a few doubts but we, we've made our peace with the Oval now and people seem to love it. That's a normal thing to build on the parklands and Oval sports city is normal. No other parklands in Australia has a hotel built on it and especially hanging off the edge of, of a sporting facility. Uh, there are two reasons um, I personally object to it, and I hope you do too. It's the parkland aspect, but also we are the guardians and custodians of the city <coughs> and the businesses of our city. We've fought long and hard not to fall to the donut effect that many cities do have. We never anticipated that these uses would go to the parklands, and therefore the don't. We always thought like it was Dulwich and going out to the suburbs that would cause the donut effect. But now we're looking at a donut effect being caused by our own park lands. The people that have hotels, they, they have to buy the land, they pay taxes and rates and so forth. None of these will apply to this hotel. Um, we also had to dig deep into our pockets to build a very expensive 40 million plus footbridge, which looks lovely on the torrents. Now that was specifically to take the patrons of the Oval into the fabric of the city and also to the large, lovely hotels and accommodation we have in those places. So that was for nothing. Just finishing off, um, we were sick of the announce and defend of the previous government, and it, it shocks me to the core as a Liberal sympathiser. This is, a, this is the very first thing they've done. And I urge them, as the good government I think they are, to rethink it and admit that this was a silly idea that won't work and we hate it. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And I want to commend Councillor Moran for putting this uh, motion forward, and I'm very proud to second it. Like many in the community, I am opposed to this plan for a luxury hotel in the parklands. The parklands are public land. 
They belong to everybody. They shouldn't be privatised or commercialised in this way. And a hotel is completely at odds with the idea of our public land being for the public good. To add insult to injury, the state government wants to loan the stadium authority public money to do this work. So it's commercialisation of our public space being bankrolled by the South Australian taxpayer. That's at a time when the state government are cutting essential services in areas like health, for instance. And we know that preventative health, Shine SA, has been cut in the recent state government budget. So perhaps they should be prioritising health and education, public services, rather than getting into the hotel game. Perhaps focus more on your core business rather than the hotel business. And I do understand that many Adelaide hoteliers are unhappy with this proposal because in effect, it's public money being given to the work of a competitor, and I share their concerns. One of the great things about the Adelaide Oval is that it links people into our city, and the footbridge acts as a link between the CBD and the Oval. And that in turn, of course, benefits local businesses. The River Torrens, as part of this plan, wasn't intended to act as some giant moat, and if this gets the green light, what we're going to see is the Adelaide Oval becoming its own gated community with a private hotel, it reduces the flow on to local businesses. And of course, what we're going to see is a luxury hotel with our parklands being the plaything of the big end of town. And that's not what it's about. I should also point out that uh, the building itself is uh, an asset for our city. It's an icon. And the idea that we start to mess with an iconic building such as this, to build on top of it, really jeopardises its value. It's moving us down the same path that we've seen in Sydney, where we see billboards on the Opera House, an increase in commercialisation of icons. Not to mention, of course, the alarming precedent that this sets for other commercialisation of our parklands. You know, students of uh, South Australian political history will know the Liberals' approach to public policy all too well. If it moves, they lock it up. If it doesn't, they sell it off. And we don't want them to be selling off our parklands. This is an early test. This is an early test for the Council. We know the new government has their sights set on our parklands. We need to take a strong stance on this. We need to make it very clear that we will fight tooth and nail. And I commend Councillor Moran for putting this forward. I encourage all of my council colleagues to get behind this so we can send a very clear, unambiguous message to the new government that the parklands are off limits. <laughs> Um, just briefly, um, I'd like to add to, uh, I, I think this is uh, a very important motion and I fully support this motion. And apart from the parklands arguments, which I think have been enunciated uh, really well by Councillors Moran and Sims, I want to just make a, a, a quick point about the, the, the second element uh, that Councillor Moran mentioned, and that is the commercial, uh, uh, the commercial distortion that this presents. Adelaide City Council depends on uh, continued investor inflows into the city uh, and uh, into the uh, from into the state, uh, from within the state and from without the state. Now, the former state government, uh, I think it's it's really underappreciated the extent to which the former state government turns South Australia into something of a laboratory for crony capitalism. This is this has weakened our state and our city dramatically. Um, if the new state government wants to send a signal out uh, that it's business as usual, that they're going to intrude using their might into the market, they're going to dilute uh, people's future investment, um, then I would say that's something they should do, but not in our name. Um, the, uh, the, the, the effect of doing this is basically, uh, you know, if you're an investor, you, you want to put money into, into building a hotel. Why would you do that down the track when you see that uh, at any moment the state government can come in uh, can offer incentives. Uh, you know, this is um, a, a taxpayer-funded loan. It will not be as onerous as a bank loan. That's probably you know, a given. Uh, they won't be paying rates. They won't be paying land tax. So it is effectively a state, another state government intrusion into the market. It's business as usual, not in our name. Councillors, any other speakers? Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I do speak in support of this motion um, and I do commend Councillor Moran for making the relevant changes. I think it's really important here to note that this will give an opportunity to this council 
to take this um, to Capital City Committee, which is the committee that is designed to bring city and state together to have an open discussion about the plans of government and the plans of council um, for the city of Adelaide. Uh, I think it's important that we send a message to the government around how we would like to do business. And the way we would like to do business is to lead by example, to take it to Capital City Committee so there isn't an announce and defend policy, but on the contrary, an opportunity for us to have this dialogue. And I'd like to think uh, that whoever's going to be on the Capital City Committee, that we will need to do everything we can to convince the government to not lend $42 million out of taxpayers' money to a special organisation because no one else gets that. People in business don't get that. Um, and that's the only hope that this council has in trying to convince the state government and obviously with public pressure as well to be able to change their decision with regards to supporting the hotel on the Oval. Um, again, uh, if we take this a little bit back into 2011 when this arrangement was done, when it comes to the lease, uh, it's completely out of our power and control, but I would argue that if at the time, in 2011, when this was put to the ledge code and the Liberals were sitting up there, they would have 100% <coughs> voted down an Adelaide Oval that had a hotel attached to it in the lease. And this is, I'll be, I'll be saying this quite bluntly, it doesn't feel like to me there's a change of government. This is something that we've seen happen before a lot, where we've seen specific businesses and specific set institution, institutions get a special preference over others. We've heard from the hotel associations, we've also heard from the hotels in the city. I'm all for free market, but at the same time, I'm all for government to interfere in the supply when the market isn't reacting. But in the case of this specific market in Adelaide, we know there's development approvals for hotels already underway. We know they are being built. We know the shortage of beds are gonna be dealt with. So why are we doing this? And the worst of all, I have a feeling, $42 million as a bank that wasn't prepared to lend the money, how do you sell an asset that is not gonna perform? The core, the core business of a, uh, of a stadium is to support sporting, concerts, entertainment. They're not hotels. So um, unless they're gonna bring a third party hotel, which is gonna make it the least very interesting for council, a third party hotel operator to operate the site, I'm not sure how they're gonna do this. So for me, it raises a lot of concerns. We haven't seen the business plan. We don't understand the return. And I think at the end of it, uh, ratepayers are gonna be impacted, but also the state taxpayers are gonna be impacted. So I am hoping uh, that the public does know we don't have powers to change the lease, but we can be loud, we can be very strong. And I'm hoping through you, Lord Mayor, at the Capital City Committee, you can make the voice of this chamber heard um, and the voice of our ratepayers in the state heard. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Are there any other speakers? If I could, what? sorry, Councillor Martin. No, I was going to go back to the mover of the motion. Oh, okay. Well, look, I, let me speak. Uh, thank you. Um, look, I, I thank Councillor Moran for this. Uh, and Lord Mayor, let me thank you also, because you did make a public statement saying that you opposed this hotel in the parklands. And I think that was an important thing for you to do. Um, we need to send a very strong message to the Premier and to the State Cabinet. And I know Councillor uh, Noel says that there's no conflict, and I respect that. But I do hope that he carries to his son the message that this council, this council has. Councillor well, Martin, finish. Well, right. Okay, but it's important for us to send to every member of the government, including the Premier and the Cabinet, the message that this is repugnant. The problem is that there's a principle here that's being compromised, and it is a principle that says it is okay to have a commercial enterprise on the parklands. It is necessary, in my view, because the Stadium Management Authority does not have the capacity to manage its affairs without this income stream. Now, it may or may not be known to most people, this council receives nothing from any government enterprise on the parklands, including the stadium. However, the Adelaide Stadium Management Authority, under the deed that was executed in 2013, is required to pay an escalating fee to the state government every year. And in 2019, it is one million dollars. And so by agreeing to a hotel on the parklands, the state government is agreeing to an income stream continuing to it. It is a conflict. 
It is a dreadful conflict. But worst of all, it compromises our parklands by putting profit before people. And that is totally unacceptable. I think that this is a very um, watershed moment um, in South Australia. We, we looked forward to the new government because we were sick of the pillaging of our part lands for this sort of activity. And we really held hope, whichever party you affiliate, we really thought a new brew might have learnt the lessons that the public tried to teach the, the previous government and not do this. But once again, we had no consultation with council, no heads up, no picking our brains because whatever the media sometimes say, that we do know the business of the Adelaide City count, uh, the Adelaide City area. There was no, the, not even that respect. In fact, in the paper today they said, oh, well, we've offered, we're going to offer them a briefing. Unless the briefing enunciates that there's not going to be a hotel, I don't think any of us really want to bother to go to it. Um, so it is absolutely incredibly disappointing. Um, the Capital City Committee, um, which um, I was there when it was um, started, was to, to so that a vehicle so that we would talk to the government before they did this, share our knowledge. And what we, we would have shared is that who's going to use this hotel? If there's a big rock concert, all the people there are from South Australia because Melbourne people don't come to Adelaide for a rock concert. If there's a big football match, they're all South Australians there too. You're not going to be staying at this hotel if you've got a conference at the conference centre because it'll be pretty darn noisy because of the rock concerts and the football. So I don't think they, I think they think they're putting profit before people, but I think they're just going to throw more money into this black hole. We all love the Oval, but it's never going to pay for itself. And uh, this little little funny hotel tacked on the sides is going to be a disaster too. 42 million, as we people that have been here a long time, will turn into 85 million. It'll be filled two weeks of the year. They'll have to do something else with it. I think the government needs to listen to us that this is not going to work because the oval is amply supplied, as some said, with hotel beds already. Um, the pace of the um, filling in the park, the park plans is really increasing. We've got the crows putting their toe in the water to build a large pub on the park lands. Um, so we, I am for one, I'm sick of it and I'm terribly disappointed that this is the way this new government's behaving. And I would say to them, there is no shame in listening to the people and changing your mind. You would be applauded for doing that because we are sick to death of the announce and defend, 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 defend. So I urge them to listen to the Lord Mayor, listen to the council, listen to the ratepayers of South Australia, not just the Adelaide City Council, and change your mind. It's a bad idea and you, they will, as night follows day, lose money on it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Moran. And Councillor Thank you, Councillor Martin. I think I did make my position clear over the last few weeks, um, but I thank council members for a clear council position and direction with this motion on notice. I now ask for you to vote on the motion. Okay, those in favour? Thank you. That is. Uh, yes, can we record that? That was a unanimous vote. Thank you. Um, are there any other motions without notice before we move to our agenda? Thank you. We move to item number 12, item number 12.1, U Park refurbishment and facade remediation for Gawler Place, the Prudential and Award of Contract Report, um, which is on page five of your papers, I believe. Could I have a councillor move the motion, please? Uh, Councillor Martin, could I have a seconder? Uh, Councillor Kouros, Councillor Martin, did you want to speak to the motion? No, Lord Mayor, I reserve my right. Councillor Kouros, reserve your right. Uh, does anyone else want to speak to the motion? If not, can we, uh, Councillor, would you like to sum up? I think I've summed up, Lord Mayor. Summed up, there being no further debate, could you now please vote on the motion? Those in favour, show of hands. Uh, those against, thank you, that is carried.
Item 12.2 uh, is the bylaw implementation report. Members, attachment A had two errors that have been corrected as you look to the screen. Um, the recommendation has been altered accordingly. Could I have, please, a councillor move? Uh, councillor Moran and a seconder, Councillor Martin. Councillor Moran, would you wish to speak to it? Uh, no, thank you, Lord Councillor Martin. <laughs> would anybody else like to speak to the motion? No, mm. Councillor Moran, would you like to sum up? Summed up. Thank you. No, being, no further debate. I'm going to ask you to vote on the motion. Those in favour, please indicate a show of hands. Uh, Councillor Kouros, was that a vote? No? Uh, thank you. Uh, those against? Uh, that is carried. Item 12.3, the Adelaide Parklands Authority nominations. The recommendation before you is procedural to facilitate the appointment. Councillor Martin? Um, I wish to move uh, an alternative motion, if I may, uh, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Martin. I believe that is on the screen. Um, and uh, for the information of members, it is as is with the addition of the words and considers the exploration of opportunities for a designated Ghana representative on APWA, um, considers this as part of discussions regarding APWA membership prior to the 31st of March. And uh, further down the screen, uh, there are, of course, um, uh, the vacancies. 5.4 should not be there. Thank you. Um, if I may speak to that, um, Lord Mayor. Uh, if, I could have if I could have a second, please, Councillor Martin. Uh, uh, Councillor Donovan, thank you. Thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. I was uh, one of the members of the, uh, the previous council who approved the reconciliation uh, action plan for 2018-21 which included those words, um, explore opportunities for a designated Ghana representative on APMA. And I support that initiative. Uh, the parklands are Ghana land and deserve Ghana representation. However, uh, there hasn't been a discussion uh, in a workshop or on the floor of council about this matter. Um, and we haven't discussed uh, whether members believed that Ghana position should be uh, a separate position, one created particularly uh, for the representative, uh, one by government appointment, or indeed uh, a, a position relinquished by the elected body uh, to make available to that Ghana representative. Um, nor was there any discussion, and I'm interested in this, about how the representative would be chosen, whether it's chosen by the Ghana people, or the list of names are submitted to council and so on. And so, uh, therefore, the alternative motion is designed to uh, address those issues so that they can be resolved in a council discussion, whether that be at workshop or in some other forum, um, and in time for there to be an appointment by March 31st. And for, for members who aren't aware, the appointments that will be made tonight to the Board of Apple are to be made until the 31st of March only because the government appointments are under consideration. Uh, the Minister, I understand, wishes to provide feedback to Council on those appointments by the 31st of March and therefore it fits the time frame for us to make that decision about uh, the nature of the Ghana representative appointment. So uh, I repeat, I support and I think most of the Council will agree with me that there is room for us to have a Ghana representative on the body to provide the kind of information and comment that would be important to the operations of APLA, but uh, with that variation, it's subject to those discussions occurring uh, before the 31st of March. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Donovan, did you wish to speak? No, uh, Councillor, Deputy Lord Mayor, Albia. Thank you, Minister. The question of administration. Obviously, we've got a recommendation here in our report to uh, consider the appointment of Jessica Davis um, as the Ghana Community Representative. Just for the purpose of minutes, and be it that potentially we're excluding uh, the consideration of that specific uh, appointment tonight, uh, which is in our papers, how did we consider that and how did that name come about? CEO. Claire Mutter, thanks. 
Through the uh, Lord Mayor, so since um, earlier this year when the Reconciliation Stretch Action Plan was endorsed, we've been working with the recommended Ghana Authority to, um, it would be a process where they would nominate on behalf of Ghana community, and that's who the recommendation has come from for the proposal tonight. If that's the case, uh, Lord Mayor, I'm going to be speaking against this change. I'm, I'm very sympathetic to what Councillor Martin's saying, and I know there's been a process in place, but it looks to me that this representation uh, or this recommendation has come from a very reputable community organisation towards the Council. And I'm mindful of the signal that we're going to give our Indigenous community and the Ghana community by saying, well, thank you. We've consulted with you. You've provided us a name, but we're not going to endorse it because we're going to think about it again for the next three months before we make a decision on the 31st of March. So I'm just mindful of the optics. I know we've got a, a, a reconciliation committee in place. Uh, we've worked through this really hard. It's really important that we have a Ghana representative. And if the Ghana community feels that this is the representative they'd like to have in there, then my position on that would be they are welcome. Um, could I ask the CEO for a response on that? Thanks, Claire. Uh, through the um, Lord Mayor, um, it was never the intent of the Reconciliation Committee to um, add a, or take away a role from Council as part of the process. Um, and so it was always um, uh, recognised that there's a current gap that there has been for some time. Um, we noticed that through discussions around Pinky Flat and other areas down um, near the River Torrens. Um, and so on the basis of um, APLA needing to be dis, um, discussed uh, with council in the coming months, it would be appropriate, I think, for that discussion to take place. So would, just a question, would Council Martin be comfortable with that advice and sort of we accept it as it is, or do I need to come up with a, not support this and go to a, a separate motion later? Um, well, I put up the variation in consultation with the administration. I'm happy with that. Uh, I'm not prepared to accept a variation. If you wish to revert to the other motion, let's put this uh, to a vote and then you can put the other motion. So I'm just a bit confused. I apologise, Lord Mayor, uh, because I'm getting mixed advice. I'm getting one piece of advice saying the work has been done, and then Councillor Martin's telling me now that he's consulted administration and they're comfortable with the amendment. So, which way is it? See you. Through you, Lord Mayor. Look, there is no right or wrong. It's a, it's a matter of your your consideration politically, both of them are, are effective in the way oh, forward. Fair enough. Well, look, in that case, if Councillor Martin is going to um, uh, recommend what's currently before us, uh, then I'll be voting against it and I'll flag that I'll move the original if this motion fails. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Are there any other speakers? Councillor Sims. Uh, yes, look, I uh, support Councillor Martin's motion, but I want to make it very clear that I'm not supporting it because I don't want to see a representation of a, a Ghana representative on APLA. I'm very much supportive of that. I think the difficulty here is that there are traditionally four members of um, APLA appointed by uh, the council, four council members on APLA. Under this uh, proposal, as it was originally put, we would only see three um, council members on APLA. And that's coming at a time when the influence of council on APLA is diminished because we have government appointees on the committee. So um, I'm very supportive of um, a representative from the Ghana community being on APLA in addition to four uh, Adelaide City Councillors because I think it's very important that we have a full complement uh, representing council on APLA at this time when we're seeing significant threats against our parklands. So this is not about being against having a voice um, from uh, the Ghana community on APLA. Quite the contrary, let's have a strong voice for council and also a, uh, a strong voice for the local Aboriginal community um, on uh, APLA as well. Uh, uh, if there are no other speakers, I'll ask Councillor Martin to sum up. Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, uh, I endorse entirely uh, what Councillor Sims has said. And look, I think uh, uh, Councillor Abia misunderstands. It is proposed in this motion to reduce the council representation on APLA by 25%. At a time when he has spoken tonight about the need for council to be mindful of things that are happening on the parklands. 
So at the time we have spoken about that, he's proposing to reduce our representation by 25%. I'm saying, well, hang on a minute, instead of uh, reducing it from four to three to accommodate the Ghana representative, and there's no question we need a Ghana representative on APLA, I'm saying let's take one step back and fill in the missing bit, which is the discussion about whether that is a position filled at the expense of an elected member on APLA or whether it's additional to. It is a discussion, in my view, that we ought to allow the Lord Mayor to have with the state government, which is also party to the legislation, the 2005 Adelaide Parklands legislation, which set up APLA. That is, that is the legislation that controls the Adelaide Parklands Authority. So by deferring this to the 31st, we're not knocking it on the head. We're saying, let's go back, let's dot the I's, let's cross the T's, let's have the discussion, particularly with the government about its legislation. That's my purpose, my only purpose, and I'd urge members to support it on that basis. Thank you. Uh so there, so yes, so no, no, you just did sum up. So I'll ask you to vote on the alternative motion, please. Those in favour? Sorry. Sorry, I apologise. Do we have to, because there's three positions with X's, does that have to be nominated at the same time or not? No. This is the procedural, oh, okay. and then we'll actually wow. go to the nominations. So I'm still at the procedural at this point. So uh, if those in favour, please show of hands. Those against? That's carried. Now I will call for nominations for four members, uh, positions on the Adelaide Parklands Authority. Uh, those members who will be appointed to the board will be required to disclose conflict of interest due to associated remuneration and leave the chamber. So, Councillor Martin, then uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, I'd like to nominate Councillor Moran and Councillor Sims and Councillor Donovan. If you can, Deputy Lord Mayor. I would like in this case to nominate Councillor Martin since he's very passionate about being involved as well. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Are there any other nominations? Uh, in the absence of further nominations, uh, Councillors uh, Moran, Sims, Donovan and Martin, I will ask you actually to leave the chamber. Oh, that's right. They all did. <laughs> uh, they did. Uh, could I have a motion, please, to appoint councillors Moran, Sims, Donovan, and Martin to the board of management for the Adelaide Parklands Authority, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, and a seconder, Councillor Abraham <laughs> Um Thank you. Uh, I'll now ask you to vote on the motion. Those in favour? Those against? Thank you. That is carried. If we could ask the councillors to come back in. Congratulations, councillors. You are now on the board of APLA. And I did presuppose that you all accepted your nominations. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, councillors, we now go to item 12.4, uh, which is the governance structure. The recommendation for you is, is procedural to facilitate the establishment of committees, adopt the terms of reference and adopt a 2019 meeting schedule. Uh, moved by Deputy Lord Mayor Albiard. Is there a seconder? Could I have a seconder, please? Councillor Knoll. Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you very much. Look, I believe that the, uh, with regards to this, that the CEO is going to take under consideration some of the timing of the committee with regards to the budget process. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Councillor, that's a, a different paper that is in 12.11. Uh, okay. 
Oh, I apologise, sorry. I thought it was all part of something, right. but happy to move this in. Thank you. Move as written. Um, Councillor Connell, did you wish to speak to it? Are there any other speakers? Councillors? Uh, would you like to sum up, Deputy Lord Mayor? Summed up. Summed up? Um, could you please fight those? Sorry, Councillor Martin, you're looking perplexed. Uh, yeah, look, I'm concerned. I'm confused. Are we voting on the procedural? Yes. Procedural. And will we vote on the attachments separately or are the attachments included in the No, procedural? we'll do each of those separately. All but, the appointments I'll be doing separately. Okay, but the, uh, the appointments, uh, this sec section also includes the committee terms of reference. And uh, I'm, I'm asking basically, are those attachments part of the procedural? Yes, they are. Okay, yes. that wasn't made clear, in which case I, I did have a problem. Right. <laughs> which is procedural, right? Yeah, look, I understand. Uh, all I'm saying is that um, there are within the documents, that is the terms of reference, a couple of things um, which amount to changes to standing orders. Um, which have not been discussed, and I would ask that those matters be deferred until we have a discussion about standing orders. At 8.27 on page 96, um, uh, the rules are that before committee, there is a possibility of only one amendment where the current practice is two. At 9.27 on page 104, the same rule applies. That is to say, there is only one amendment allowed instead of two. I'm getting a smile, have I got it right? And uh, additionally, at 9.263, um, it is proposed that be before the Strategic and Planning Policy Committee, where there are guests, it appears to read that committee members are not able to ask questions. And if ever there was a committee where it was important for members of the committee to be able to ask questions of people who are presenting strategic plans, developments and the like, that is where it's important. And so I would ask that those matters be withdrawn from the attachment and be the subject of a separate discussion on standing orders. Sorry, through the CEO. Through you, Lord Mayor. We do actually need the terms of reference to be endorsed by Council so we can get operating. Happy to bring back those particular items as part of the standing water conversations, and from that process we can adjust. So practically we can work through this and make those minor changes back as, as required by Council. Well, if you're happy with that, why can't we just uh, have an agreement from the administration that they will be amended to the extent that the prevailing standing orders apply, and then there's no problem. Yep, we could do that. Three more minutes. Yep. Okay, I'm happy. Then. I think, actually, I am asking for us to vote on the motion. No. Sorry. Have you summed up? Well, no, because I, as the mover, I would need to make an amendment to take into account what Councillor Martin has just said. The undertaking is a, is a, is a huge amount of stuff that needs to change. So. Hang on. Oh, it's got a fair few points. So three points. Yep, that's true. So point six, the terms of reference allows the CEO to make amendments to the terms of reference. Um, if the CEO has undertaken to take that on board until we bring the standing orders back in in January, uh, at which case we can actually make the amendments that are in this paper. So why don't we change? Six to say that we continue adopting the current terms of reference. Yeah. That's, is, that is correct. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So just um, is that correct, CEO? Might just get some clarification. Yeah. 
through you, Lord Mayor, um, my interpretation from Councillor Mar Martin's statement was that we would adopt the terms of reference as attached, noting the three items that were anomalous to the preceding terms of reference, and under that delegated authority, we would revert those to the preceding terms of reference, the current ones, until the 22nd of January, when we will be coming back in with a workshop on standing orders and we can address them explicitly. This gives us a full adopted terms of reference to commence that first committee meeting within any other meetings we need in the meantime. Why can't we leave everything the same to the 22nd of January? Through the Lord Mayor, the problem we then have is that uh, we will have to start a committee without terms of reference, so that's a, a little problematic. We will adopt the identical terms of reference of 2014-2018. The previous terms of reference applied to different committee structure, so... This, this, this term of reference to the committee structure. Okay. So, just to perhaps um, try to clarify this, the CEO has the delegation on the item six here to alter the terms of reference and CEO just provided an undertaking to take on the three comments that were provided and incorporate those uh, under his delegation regardless. So we have then a set of terms of reference that we can work with at the first committee meeting. And of course, it's only terms of reference, so further amendments can then be suggested at that point in time from that moment onwards. Can we put an expiry on this then? <coughs> or we don't need to do that? Uh, okay. And now, happy to take it on board as the mover. Thank you. Thank you. So, we are now voting on the procedural. Um, if I could ask you to vote on the motion. Thank you. That's all in favour, that's carried. So members, we now have appointments to make. Uh, so I'll do step by step in order. So firstly, the appointment of chairs and deputy chairs, the appointments to the audit committee, and lastly, appointments to the reconciliation committee. So I now call for nominations for a chair and deputy chair for the committee for the period 1st of January to the 31st of March. Um, Councillor, oh, sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor. I'd like to nominate Councillor Moran as the chair for the first period and Councillor Martin as the deputy chair for the first period. Councillor. the reverse. Um, I haven't called for the nomination of the second period. Oh, sorry, yet. I apologise. So, uh, if I could just do this one, Councillor Moran and Councillor Martin, are you happy to accept those nominations? Thank you. Councillors, uh, are there any further nominations? No? In the absence of further nominations, Councillors Moran and Martin have been selected as Chair and Deputy Chair. Don't we have to leave the room? Uh, the Deputy Chair does not need to leave the room. The Chair needs to leave the room. Thank you. Sorry, not elected quite yet. Selected. Um, can I have a motion to appoint councillors uh, Moran as the chair and councillor Martin as the deputy chair of the committee for the period the 1st of January 2019 to the 3rd of 31st of March 2019? Moved by Deputy Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Abrahamsadet. Uh, those in favour? Those against? Right, that's carried. Councillor Moran can come back in. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Moran. Members, I now come for nominations for a chair and deputy chair for the committee for the period the 1st of April to the 30th of June 2019. Um. Happy Lord Mayor to, Lord um, Mayor. to propose the reverse. So Councillor Martin to chair and Councillor Moran to be deputy chair for that period. Councillor Martin and Councillor Moran, do you accept the nominations? I do. Yes. Yes, Councillor Martin, thank you. Are there any further nominations? In the absence of further nominations, uh, councillors Martin and Moran have been selected as chair and deputy chair. Could I have a motion to appoint councillors Martin and Moran as chair and deputy chair of the committee for the period 1st of April 2019 to 30th of June? Thank you, councillor Sims. Um, 
and seconded by Councillor, uh, sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, no, just one moment. <laughs> so I'll ask you to vote on the motion. Those in favour? Thank you. That is carried. Councillor Martin. <laughs> Members, I now call for a nomination for Chair and Deputy Chair for the Street Strategic Planning and Development Policy Committee for the period the 1st of January to the 31st of March. Uh, the member will be uh, required to disclose conflict of interest due to remuneration and leave the chamber. Um, Deputy Lord Mayor. Happy to nominate um, Councillor um, Abraham Zeta as the Chair and Councillor um, Sims as the Deputy Chair <coughs> for the first period, if they wish to accept. Councillor Abraham Zedad, do you accept the nomination? Uh, yes, Lord Mayor. Councillor Sims, do you accept the nomination? Pleasantly surprised, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other further nominations? No. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Um, so, in the absence of further nominations, Councillors Abraham Zedad and Councillor uh, Sims have been selected Chair and Deputy Chair. Could I have a motion, please, to appoint Councillors, Deputy Lord Mayor? Um, this is for the period the 1st of January to the 31st of March 27, uh, 2019. <laughs> um, I'll ask you to vote. Thank you on the motion. Oh, sorry, did I have a second? It's Councillor um, Kerrin. Uh, thank you. Uh, those in favour? Thank you. Those against, that's carried. Thank you. Oh. So members, I now call for nominations for Chair and Deputy Chair for the Strategic Planning and Development Policy Committee for the period 1st of April to the 30th of June 2019. Deputy Lord Mayor. I'd um, like to nominate Councillor Sims and, as Chair and Councillor Donovan as Deputy Chair. Councillor Sims and Councillor Donovan, do you accept the nominations? Are there any further nominations? No, thank you, Councillor Sims. Um, so, could I have a motion, please, to appoint Councillor Sims and Councillor Donovan as Chair and Deputy Chair for, for the Strategic Planning and Development Policy Committee for the period 1st to the 31st of March? So, I have Councillor Ho and uh, Deputy Lord Mayor uh, as a seconder. I'll now ask you to vote. So, which committee did you say that? This is the Strategic Planning and Development Policy Committee. Secretary. Yep. I'll now ask you, sorry. I'll now ask you to vote on the motion. Those in favour? Thank you. Those against? That is carried. Members, for the audit committee, we have one council position and a proxy member position for the Lord Mayor and a proxy mem member for the councillor. Could I have nominations for the audit council position? Deputy Lord Mayor. Can't think of a better councillor than Councillor Phil Martin, <laughs> Master Auditor. Councillor Martin, as the councillor position, would you also like to nominate proxy members? I need a proxy member for the Lord Mayor and a proxy member for the councillor. Um, would you like to be an audit committee? Jesse? No? Alex? So I'd like to, uh, Councillor Hyde? Sorry, apologies, Councillor Hyde. As proxy for the Lord Mayor? Uh, that's correct. And as proxy for the Councillor? Um, Councillor Moran? No? Councillor Knoll, as the proxy. Councillor Knoll, thank you. Councillors, do you accept the nominations? Lovely. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Martin, did you accept your nomination? I did. Thank you. Are there any further nominations? Members, in the absence of further nominations, could I uh, ask? No, there's no remuneration. Sure, could I ask uh, for a motion to appoint Councillor Martin to the Audit Committee for a period of two years? Uh, thank you, uh, DLM and Councillor Sims. And a motion, uh, and further to that motion, to the two proxy positions, 
uh, proxy for Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde, and proxy for Councillor Martin, Councillor Knoll. Yes, Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Sims, happy with that. Thank you. Could I now ask you to vote on that motion? Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Members, for the Reconciliation Committee, we have three positions. Could I please call for nominations for the Reconciliation Commission? Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I wish to nominate uh, Councillor Aviad and Councillor Donovan. Uh, we have three positions. Was there a third, uh, another nomination? Councillor Aviad, is it? Lord Mayor, I'd like to nominate Councillor Sims. Councillor Sims. I'm happy to accept uh, Lord Mayor, but I have been on the committee before, so if someone else would like an opportunity, I'm happy to forego it as well. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you accept your nomination? Uh, no, I'm already heavily involved to the Australian Mayor Council on this stuff as well, and I've done the term before, so my preference is if anyone else would like to uh, to give it a go, I would do that as well. Thank you. So I'm happy to nominate Councillor Abraham Zeta if you would like to be involved. <laughs> Uh, Lord Mayor, I think I'd like to give myself some time to get my head around the council business first. So uh, uh, thank you for the nomination, but uh, I'll have to decline at this thank stage. Thank you. Councillor Donovan, did you accept your nomination? Thank you. So I have Councillor Donovan and Councillor Sims. I would like a further nomination. Yeah, and um, I'd uh, like to nominate Councillor Knoll. Councillor Knoll, do you accept the nomination? <laughs> um, I'll do my best. That was a yes. That was a yes. Thank you. Are there any further nominations? Uh, uh, in the absence of further nominations, Deputy Lord Mayor, can I have a motion to appoint Councillors Donovan, Sims and Noel to the Reconciliation Committee? and for a period of two years. That's correct. Uh, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Ho. Is, uh, does anyone wish to speak to that motion? No. Um, Deputy Lord Mayor, would you like to sum up? Sum up. Would I ask you to please vote on the motion? Those in favour? Thank you. Those against? That is carried. Item 12.3, need a glass of water. Um, <laughs> appointment of external members to the reconciliation. Oh, no, 12.5, sorry, 12.5. Uh, the appointment of external members to the reconciliation committee. Uh, could I ask a councillor to move? Thank you, Councillor Moran. And a seconder, uh, Councillor Martin. Um, councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? No, Lord Mayor. Uh, councillor Martin? No, uh, do any other councillors wish to speak to the motion? Councillor Moran, would you like to sum up? Thank you. I uh, ask you to vote, please. Well, a show of hands, those in favour. Thank you, those against. That is carried. <laughs> councillors, 12.6 is the appointment of a council member to the Adelaide Central Market Authority. This is procedural first, and then we'll go to the appointment of councillor. Could I have a councillor move? Thank you, Councillor Moran. A seconder, Councillor Abrianzade. Uh, councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? No, uh, Councillor Abrianzade, did you wish to speak? No. Reserve your right. Any other councillors wish to speak? Thank you. Uh, we will then, Councillor, would you sum up? Uh, Can you sum up? Thank you. There being no further debate, can we vote? Please show of hands. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Could I now have a call for nominations for one position for the Adelaide Central Market Authority? Councillor Abraham Zadeh. Lord Mayor, I'd like to nominate Councillor uh, Abia, please. Thank you. Councillor Abia, do you accept the nomination? Thank you. Are there any other nominations? No, that being the case, Councillor, could I ask you please to leave the room? Members, in the absence of further nominations, could I have a motion, please, to appoint Councillor Abiyad to the Central Market Authority for a term of two years, being from the 11th of December 2018 to 2020? Councillor Moran, could I have a seconder? Councillor Ho. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to the motion? <coughs> uh, no, 
did you wish to sum up on the motion? Sorry, I think you just said that, didn't you? Uh, could I now ask you to vote? Those in favour? Thank you. Those against? That motion is carried. Could you ask Councillor, oh, sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor, come back in, please? Um, 12.7, appointment of council member to the Rundle Mall Management Authority. The first is procedural. Could I have a councillor move? Councillor Martin and a seconder. Councillor Donovan, does anybody wish to, sorry, uh, Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to it? Councillor Donovan, no. Does anyone wish to speak to the motion? If not, uh, Councillor, you, would you wish to sum up? Uh, could I ask you to vote, please? Those in favour? Thank you. Those against? That is carried. Uh, could I have a nomination for one position on the Rundle Mall Management Authority for a two-year term? Can, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, I'd like to nominate Councillor Canole. Councillor Canole. Councillor Canole, do you accept the nomination? I accept. Are there any other further nominations? No? Uh, members in the absence of further nominations, Councillor, could you please leave the room? Can I please have a motion to appoint Councillor Canole to the Rundle Mall Management Authority for a two year term commencing the 11th of December? Councillor Abrahimzade, uh, seconded by Councillor Hyde. Uh, Councillor, did you wish to speak to the motion? Did you wish to speak to the motion? No. no. Councillor Hyde, uh, do you wish to sum up on the motion? Summed up. Summed up. Now ask you to vote. Thank you. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Councillor Guros, are you voting with us tonight? Thank you. That is carried. Councillor Knoll, can you come back into the room? Uh, Councillors, 12.8, Council representation on external boards and committees. This is procedural first. Um, there is one small amendment, uh, which is uh, and number four approves the appointment of two Council members to Capital City Committee for the term 28 uh, plus one proxy. So we've just added in a proxy. Um, could I actually have a mover? Thank you, DLM. Seconder, Councillor Moran. Um, did you wish to speak to the motion, Deputy Lord Mayor? No, Councillor Moran. Do you wish to sum up? Deputy Lord Mayor, thank you. Uh, there being no further debate, if you could please vote. Those in favour? Those against? Thank you. That is carried. Um, we do require three nominations for a panel for the position on the Adelaide Festival uh, Corporation Board. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. I'd, I'd like to nominate you, Lord Mayor, Councillor Sims and Councillor Kira. Kira. Uh, Councillor Sims, do you accept the nomination? Councillor Kira? Um, do we, before I absent myself from the chamber, do we have any further nominations? No? Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, I need to leave the chamber if you could take over proceedings. Um, and I accept the nomination. Um, councillors, we um, have the uh, Lord Mayor's nominee, Councillor Sims, and also uh, Councillor Kerro. Can I have a motion from the floor to move for that? So, Councillor Abraham Zeta moved, seconded by Councillor Moran. Any debate or discussion with regards to those three names being put, put forward for the Adelaide Festival Corporation Board? Back to you, uh, Councillor Abraham Zeta, sum up. Summed up. Summed up. Okay, I'll ask for a vote. All those in favour? All those against, that item is carried. And if we could uh, have the Lord Mayor come back in. Councillors, I now am asking for uh, nominations for two positions on the Capital 
city committee plus a proxy. Councillor Abraham Zidek. Lord Mayor, I'd like to nominate uh, uh, Councillor Abia and Councillor Hyde and uh, Councillor Donovan as a proxy. Proxy Donovan. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, do you accept the nomination? Yes, Councillor Hyde, do you accept the nomination? Councillor Donovan, do you accept the nomination for proxy? Councillor Sims. I'd like to nominate uh, Councillor Donovan as a standing member of the committee, not simply proxy. Thank you. Do you accept the nomination as a standing member? Uh, Councillor Martin. Uh, my nomination is fine, thank you. <laughs> Sorry? It's okay, thank you. I, oh. I was you were just exercising. Thank you, excellent. If anybody else feels like doing that, now is a good time. Uh, so we have, are there any further nominations? So we have three nominations for two positions, which means we go to a ballot. Um, so, We'll do that now. Great, thank you. Just one moment. Members, you just reminded that Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde and Councillor Dr Donovan have been nominated. There are two positions, so you need to select two. I will do the proxy after we've elected the, the uh, members. Thank you, Councillor Martin. And we have to vote for two. Yes, you vote for two. Thank you. And the candidates again. I'm sorry, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Hyde, and Councillor. So you have uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde, and Councillor Donovan. So you vote for two positions, please. And no vote for. Members will just tally the votes. Yeah. 
Thank you. Uh, so the two members that have been uh, voted are Council, uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Hyde. Um, so I'll now ask for a nomination for proxy. So I have uh, Councillor Donovan still as a proxy. Are, are you still happy to accept that? Are there any other nominations for proxy? No, thank you. Um, in the absence of further, if I could have a motion please to appoint councillors, sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde and Councillor Donovan as proxy to the Capital City Committee. Thank you, Councillor Sin, seconded by uh, Councillor Kerr. Uh, Councillor Sims, did you wish to speak to the motion? Um, Councillor Kerr, no. Councillor, do you want to sum up? Councillor, sum up. Please vote. Those in favour, those against. That is carried. Councillors, item 12.9, appointment of council members to the public art round table. Uh, could I have nominations for two positions, please, on the public art round table? Ooh, hands everywhere. Councillor Donovan. I nominate Councillors Kira and Councillor Martin. My apologies, sorry, we have to do the procedural first. Um, if I could actually have the motion moved, Deputy Lord Mayor and a second for the motion. <laughs> Councillor Hyde, uh, any, would you like to speak to the motion? Deputy Lord Mayor? Summed up. No, summed up. Could I vote, have a vote, please, those in favour? Those against, thank you, that's carried. Now, apologies to Councillor Donovan if I could have nominations for two members for the Public Art Roundtable. I nominate Councillors Kira and Martin. Kira and Martin. Councillors Kira and Martin, do you accept the nominations? Yes. Are there any further nominations? No, They're in the absence of further nominations, you don't have to leave the room, Councillor. Um, could I have a motion to appoint Councillors Kira and Martin to the Public Art Roundtable? Uh, thank you, Councillor Donovan, um, seconded by Councillor Sims. Uh, Councillor, do you wish to speak to the motion? No. Councillor Martin? No. Councillor Sims, sorry. Uh, did you wish to sum up? Thank you. And I'll ask you to vote on the motion. Those in favour? Those against? Uh, that is carried. Item 12.10 we dealt with earlier. That takes us to item 12.11. Councillors, before I ask for a councillor to move, if you just note that uh, number nine, sort of point nine, uh, which proposes the approach and time frame for the presentation of the integrated business plan, um, given the feedback from Thursday, um, perhaps we could ask the uh, CEO to undertake to add additional meetings as required. CEO? Through the way, I'm happy to take that on notice. I've definitely got the message you require much more detail and more meetings, so we'll schedule that for sure. So if councillors are happy with uh, that undertaking from the CEO, could I have a councillor please move the motion? Which motion is it? Again? This, this oh. is 12.11. <coughs> Lord Mayor, sorry, do I, do I think I think you, we missed the whole section? Uh, no, we did the Treasury stuff. Before. We did the Treasury uh, earlier. No, no, I'm talking about the um, uh, items um, in 12.8. Oh. Sorry. One moment. <laughs> I think we've done all of those. Are you the other committee? Yeah. No, we've done that. No, there's, no, there's the City of Adelaide representation 2018-22 term with regards to Adelaide Airport Consultative Committee, Convention Bureau, High School, Horse Trials. Um, Dealer, I'm being told that that's coming back in a future report. The other appointments. So these are, we've dealt with the appointments that are in the on the agenda for tonight. Okay, sure. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, we'll be bringing those in in the new year. 
Um, so we are on item 12.8, which is the uh, quarter one finance report at uh, 12.11. I need that stretch now. Uh, Councillor Martin. Moving as printed. Moving as printed. Uh, could I have a seconder, please? Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to him? I don't wish to speak to it. Just a very quick question. Uh, at Schedule 5 on page 176, the long-term financial plan shows commercial property sales for each of the financial years from next year to 2027-28, averaging around $20 million a year. Um, what are those commercial properties again? Say no. Can we just clarify page 176? Yep. Um, just about to get it out of Go to the middle of the page. Here. Just those. It's showing what's marked as long term financial plan without commercial property sales. So I'm wondering what those commercial property sales are. Yeah, uh, Councillor, we did address that in the um, briefing. Uh, we um, three, Lord Mayor, the graph that you've um, pointed, Councillor, refers to Council's aggregate borrowings. There isn't twenty million dollars per year. It's actually one graph in the dark blue showing the aggregated position without this, with their sales, and then the light blue extension shows the um, borrowing position with the sales. They all occur currently in the 1920, with some a number of minor items in there and some other property sales as well. I'd suggest we need to be confident for me to detail the precise amounts and the properties in question. Perhaps you might do that for us in the in confidence section. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Does anyone else wish to speak to the motion? Uh, if not, Councillor Martin, would you like to sum up? No, I've said no, thanks. <laughs> mm -hmm. There being no further debate, can you please vote on the motion? Those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Item 12.12 .12 is the quarterly forward procurement report. Uh, could I please have a councillor move, Deputy Lord Mayor, and a seconder? <laughs> councillor Martin, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Councillor Martin, uh, do any other councillors wish to speak to the item? Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to sum up? There being no further debate, I ask you to vote, please, by show of hands. Those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Uh, questions on notice, councillors. Uh, there are five questions on notice. Uh, Councillor Sims, would you like to read your question in relation to the skate park? Certainly, thank you, Lord Mayor. Can administration please provide an update on their efforts to secure state government funding for a permanent skate park in the city of Adelaide? Uh, in so one moment, Councillor Sims. Uh, would you like the reply to be read? Yes, please. So, Councillor, a draft cityscape strategy, which includes location options, is currently being finalised to be presented to the Adelaide Parklands Authority and Council in March, April 2019, seeking endorsement for a preferred site for a new cityscape park. Once a preferred site is selected by Council, further discussions and a partnering approach with the State Government for the funding, design and construction will be sought for 2019-2020. Thank you. Item 13.2, Councillor Sims, would you like to read your question in relation to Edmund Wright House? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Given community concern about the State Government's disappointing decision to sell the historic Edmund Wright House on King William Street, can administration please advise Council as to the current status of this process? And as this property has recently been subject to littering and graffiti, has or will administration advocate for the State Government to immediately put in place a maintenance program to rectify these issues? 
Thank you, Councillor Sims. Would you like your reply read? Yes, please. The property was introduced to market via a formal tender and the tender closed on the 4th of October 2018. All the tender submissions were conditional upon the approval of the South Australian Government Cabinet. No formal announcement has been made regarding the process. However, we understand that the matter currently sits with the Honourable Stefan Knoll, the Minister for Transport, Infrastructure and Local Government, and the Minister for Planning, and a decision is imminent. The administration will engage with the relevant, uh, relevant, relevant state government agency and raise council's concerns relating to the presentation of the property, being littering and graffiti, and seek a maintenance program that will address these concerns. Thank you, Councillor. Item 13.3, Deputy Lord Mayor, would you like to read your question in relation to Boxing Day promotional activity? I'm happy to take it as read. Taken as read. Um, are you happy for the reply to be read or taken as read? Taken as read. Thank you, Councillor uh, Abia, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, item 13.4, Councillor Abraham Zadeh, would you like to read your question in relation to the Frome Road Traffic Management Plan? Take it as read. Take it as read. Um, given the reply is more than one page, are you happy that we table the response to the question? Uh, I'm happy with that, Lord Mayor. I just I do have one question. Am I able to ask at the administration that question? I, uh, you have to ask it through questions without notice. No worries. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, item 13.5, Councillor Dr Donovan, would you please would you like to read your question? in relation to the bikeway network implementation plan. Could administration please provide an update on the progress of the bike uh, network implementation plan as outlined as an action in the 2016-2018 Smart Move Interim Action Plan? Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Would you like your reply read? We're working through the Smart Move Interim Action Plan 2016 to 2018 actions. The preparation of a bikeways network implementation plan is one of the outstanding actions. The preparation of a bikeways network implementation plan will be considered as part of the 2019-20 integrated business plan and budget process. Thank you. Uh, members, item 14, are, are there any questions without notice? Councillor Abraham Uh Lord Mayor, given the administration's answer to the Adelaide Botanic High School opening hours for Term 1, 2019. I wanted to uh, just double check um, uh, in the response 2.1, uh, commencing school start at 9.25 a.m. I wanted to check and see whether if that's, um, that's an ongoing thing or whether if that's just in Term 1. Um, do we have any uh, further information on that? CEO. Um, Beth Thurston Park, I think we've got some more. Uh, through you, Lord Mayor, our understanding is that that will be the permanent opening hours for the school in a deliberate um, act to be trying to manage the, the access and the traffic issues. No worries. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions on notice? Thank you. Members, item 15, there are four motions on notice. Item 15.1, Councillor Kouros, motion on notice, car park, ADO to Connell Street. Would you like to move your motion? Yes, I do. Stand that. Um, that the council notes that recent closure of multiple businesses on O'Connell Street and the impact this has had on the community. Request administration look for ways to open the car park at Adia O'Connell Street, uh, North Adelaide immediately and especially for the Christmas train. Uh, the purpose thank, for this motion. No, thank you. I need a seconder for that motion. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. May I speak to Thank you. you. Sorry. Um, the purpose for this motion and why I'm bringing it forward is because um, the inability for people to park at ADA O'Connell has impacted the traders um, and uh, they feel that, um, and also the residential community as a whole as well. Um, in talking to the traders, they feel that if we do open that up, it would help them um, for, the, for the businesses and in lieu of what's been happening in O'Connell Street uh, lately, um, they feel that this has impacted them and they really would like the administration to look at ways to open that up for the um, for the public and for people to come and use and park efficiently in O'Connell Street. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Uh, um, Councillor Moran. 
yes, look, I don't quite understand. I don't think this motion is quite specific enough or gives the staff direction enough. Um, a, um, a paid public park, car park at grade is absolutely unacceptable. Uh, we have a very strict rule that uh, we do not let undeveloped sites have parking on it. It's a licence to print money and we are extremely strict on not allowing any other developer to do that and neither do in my knowledge, we have never allowed anybody in 23 years that has a building site to use that as a car park. However, uh, so that, uh, you, you're not getting anywhere with that. The community would be against it. It would lead to park and rides into the city. Um, it would look as ugly as the old tin fence used to look. And it is unconscionable if we decided to give ourselves a gift like that where we have, as I said, in 23 years on the development assessment panel, we have refused every single one. However, we used to have a car park behind the old Pisanos with Boomgate for traders and for staff. It was at no cost because as soon as you charge, we are then running a commercial car park on our building site, which as I said, we do not let anybody else do. Uh, so I would be more than happy in a similar position, which would be the Tin Street, the back of the Tin Street side at the back of the site where we used to have the car park. It was then shielded from the street by a building, but however, we could uh, put some uh, hoardings up and make it look attractive um, and not, not see the cars there. Uh, so if that's the, cap, uh, the sort of car park that Mary's, uh, Councillor Kuros is envisaging, then that's fine. Uh, the traders do find it hard with the street restrictions and the workers in the, in the store shops do indeed find it um, awkward to park, especially in the two and three hour limits and um, the limits down in the car park. So that I would, but absolutely no to um, any sort of using it as an at grade car park for anybody for a fee. That would make me very ashamed of council if we, um, having for years stuck to our guns to train other developers, it tends to make a lot of money for the person, that's why they want to do it, and thereby it delays, um, it significantly delays the um, development of that site because it is such a money spinner. So um, I, I couldn't in all conscience support that, but I could support a car, an unpaid car park um, annexed off for the traders and the staff in the shops. That's perfectly acceptable. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Any other uh, speakers to that motion? No, Councillor Kouros, would you like to sum up the motion? What I'm basically asking I, is for the administration to come forward with some ideas on how we can use it for a car park. I'm, I'm not opposed to, um, you know, what uh, Councillor Moran is saying, but I'm also... Oh, sorry, that's not you. No, that's, like... <laughs> that's not you. <laughs> sorry, Councillor Kouros. I would like the administration to come up with with the possibilities of how that car park can be used and put it forward to the rest of the councillors to decide on. So basically it says request administration look for ways to open up the car park and how that would look, what that would look like um, and put it forward to us. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Um, if we could now please vote on the motion. Those in favour? Those against? That motion is carried. Uh, Item 15.2, Councillor Kouros, motion on notice 88 O'Connell uh, Street, Box Park. Councillor Kouros, would you like to move your motion, please? Thank you. Um, let's count. Um, Councillor Kouros, I'm that the council notes the ongoing expression of interest process for the development of 88 O'Connell Street and the imperative and the imperative to keep the site activated throughout the process. A uh, request for administration to prepare a report on how to temp how a temporary activation similar to a box park concept can be established on the 88 O'Connell Street site to attract complementing and non-competing operators to North Adelaide. Request for this report to be returned no later than February 2019. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Abrahamsado. Could, uh, uh, Councillor, would you like to speak to the motion? Councillor Kouros? Yes, I do. Yep. Sorry.
Um, thank you. So the purpose of this motion is to activate Ada O'Connell um, until the development by placing by businesses that are non-competing and complement the uh, current businesses that are in the area. This will encourage people from the outside of North Adelaide to come into the precinct and create foot traffic and awareness of the other businesses that are in the area. Um, it is a uh, low risk, at the same time it's increasing revenue to deliver back to the precinct. And the beauty about this is that once the development is going to take place, the um, box park, if you want to call it that, can be taken away and placed somewhere else um, that needs some sort of activation. Um, it can be uh, used for a retail mix, um, it uh, can be used for hiring events, it can be used for uh, festivals. It creates the opportunity to try and model and then it uh, may encourage them um, to set up a more permanent business in the area. We need to bring back confidence into North Adelaide, we need to bring back confidence in people setting up their businesses in North Adelaide. And I believe that with the uh, site there that we can utilise it for it to be a benefit um, over the long term um, for ADAC, for O'Connell Street. Um, it, when people see activity happening and, and brings a, a, a different um, businesses to come into the area to want to set something up. So the whole purpose is to use that site that the, the council has invested already $35 million. Um, so to use that site to create awareness and to um, establish a you know something better for North Adelaide. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Abrinzadeh, did you wish to speak? Sure, Sorry, right. Councillor Moran? Uh, yes. Look, I, I, I think I can countenance this because um, it does just say investigate. But if it was just for a box park, I'd say absolutely not. Dumping shipping containers onto um, the La Cornu site is not acceptable in the, the lovely uh, historic suburb that we have. In a hard-edged New York suburban or um, industrial centre like where Barrio was, lovely. But this is not good enough for North Adelaide and I'm glad to see it's just mentioned as an example. Uh, I also have a problem with complementary or non-competing. When I spoke to Councillor Kuros, you mentioned small bars. Well, as we've just lost our, the Archer and the small bars along there are struggling, I think that would be a competing interest. So I'm struggling to actually think of any um, any uh, commercial use there that would not be directly competing with uh, Connell Street. And we don't want to add any more um, grief to these struggling traders there where it's uh, not lack of foot traffic, it really is high, astronomically ridiculously high rents. And this what might be, potentially might be another burden that they can't cope with. Um, I think people in North Adelaide, if they see us doing something like a hard structure like that, will think, oh, well, they're never gonna develop it, this is it. I think our focus should be on developing the look or new side. That's what the side is. Not dumping, as I said, shipping containers. Um, the new council might not read it, but we also take a very hard line in using shipping containers in the parkland as storage units. We don't like it. Um, we put very strict rules on how quickly they must put a, an attractive structure up. Um, so once again, um, it is government entering a commercial um, arrangement in direct competition with the bricks and mortar. Um, but I have no problem with looking at, at more activation of the site, some, some shade things, putting, putting some barbecues there or something like that that's in keeping with, as I said, the lovely dignified suburb that is North Adelaide does not deserve this hard edge rough treatment. And I would encourage the administration to see that as an example, not a direction. Thank you. Councillor Sims. I wanted to make a few remarks and ask a few questions. Is that okay? To speak first and then ask questions? Yes. Uh, look, I, I agree with um, a lot of the comments that um, Councillor Moran um, has made. And, and like Councillor Moran, I am concerned about the potential for this temporary concept to become more permanent. And I would hate to see something like this take hold in um, 88 O'Connell and then to be used as a reason for, not, for us not to progress uh, development on the site. But I did want to um, ask a few questions of administration, further to Councillor Moran's point about non-competing operators um, on the O'Connell Street area. 
I, I mean, my uh, experience with O'Connell Street is that it has cafes, uh, restaurants, bars, retail, a, a broad mix of, um, of, uh, of uh, opportunities there. Can administration provide some clarity on what would be non-competing in terms of um, options for, for the site? CEO? Three, well, that would be the intent of the report to council. So we would need to consider those aspects and report back to you. So there's no non-competing opportunities that would come to mind? <laughs> I, I don't have any comments. I can think of a few, but I've not been asked the question. <laughs> Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, um, uh, my position on 88 O'Connell Street is clear, it's similar to Councillor Moran's. Uh, we, as a council, have made a decision to enter into an internationally competitive process, um, and uh, that will take, in my view, some years. And frankly, if there's some building activity as a result of this process in 2022, I'll be just delighted. But frankly, we ought to have done uh, the obvious thing, and that is constructed a car park, so there'd be no need for notions about at great car parks. And we should be selling off the titles, all 27 of them, and we should be selling them to South Australian developers, for South Australian developments, for South Australian... We're talking to the promotion. Well, I'm making, I'm making the point, and the point is that development is the best option, not a distraction, not a box park. Um, not any other activation. Get on with the development, stop mucking about. But I'm not going to object to the proposal, I'll support it, uh, uh, despite I know the objections of some residents who would uh, uh, prefer not to have shipping containers on that lot. But in asking uh, and agreeing to the, uh, the report, I would ask the administration uh, in investigating non-competing sites um, uh, or businesses to specifically investigate Section 45 of the Australian Competition Consumer Act. Um, and I specifically request that the administration examines the conditions proposed in uh, the context of what the Act has to say about anti-competitive behaviour, including cartels and exclusive dealing. And if uh, my information is correct, and if there is a problem, uh, and the only way it can proceed is by having competing businesses, then I think the administration will provide a report to us on what the traders of North Adelaide will think about a massive box park full of competing coffee shops, competing restaurants, competing dress shops. That would be a very important part of any consideration of any report that comes back to council. But uh, as much as I would support it, may I just reiterate, can't we just get on with it, please, and develop the site? Councillor Martin, I think I can speak for everybody in the chamber when, it, when you say it is our absolute intention to get on with it and develop the site. And as you know, we are, have already going through an um, expression of interest process, and that will be brought into the council very early in the new year. Uh, any other speakers? Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. And just look quickly, um, this is an in-between solution. No one's talking about permanent, and I'm sure members are going to realise very quickly that we have a $35 million loan hole, which represents 35% of our current borrowings that we need to put a hole in, put a cap on. About the same as uh, We need to do that. That $35 million is really important. So no one's going to leave a $35 million asset uh, with a non-permanent activation sitting there because simply the community has enjoyed it now, we're going to keep it, a, uh, it is what it is. Um, when we're talking about heritage of the area, some of these, um, some of these aspects of containers, Councillor Moran, are very sympathetic to that. Uh, these have been established in shortage, uh, long heritage buildings in Croydon, uh, in the UK, uh, along heritage buildings. Yeah, they've been, they've, if you look at, if you look at, I'm not comparing it to that. I'm explaining to you, not put in South Australia. Um, I'm explaining what to you. the beach volleyball floor? That's exactly what we did there. We put a beach volleyball on it. It's still there 17 years later. Councillor Deputy Lord Mayor speaking. Sorry. Thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. So look, the intention here is if the council can derive even a break-even discussion, and have something on site that brings a cultural aspect, that brings a retail aspect and create a good retail mix to litmus test the market. I mean, people that are that cannot afford to enter 
into North Adelaide to rent some of the shops to deal with some of those issues might have an opportunity to lease a space for a short period of time, test their product with the North Adelaide target market and potentially permanently move onto a site in the area and have a business model that works for them, that works in the area. So this is not something that is going to be established permanently on there and it will give an opportunity to council to have some type of a return uh, on investment in the short term until its development is on the way. As Councillor Martin said and Councillor Moran said before, we all want to see the site developed. This is not holding the site back. This is an in-between solution. This is all we're looking for. And I believe that's the intention of Councillor Kuros uh, in having this, uh, this motion of bringing more people to a common street is important. We're seeing a lot of closures that are happening in the area as well. The business is struggling. So if we're able to bring some of that in, then that would be absolutely great. So is everything okay with me? I think so, thank you. And uh, look, I'll speak in support of this motion. So. Thank you. Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd just like to make a couple of quick points as I rise to support this motion. Um, number one is that, yes, we do absolutely need to develop that site as quickly as possible. We have a significant amount of money tied up there. Um, and when we realise on some of those funds that we have there, we can start spending some money on South Ward, which has been neglected um, woefully over the past few years. Um, uh, and moreover, also making reflections, um, there are some similarities between uh, parts of North Adelaide um, and parts of the South East. Um, of the city. Uh, the businesses around where I live similarly are struggling. We have a main street precinct um, that is not doing very well. There are lots of closures um, and there are lots of business businesses on the brink. I would just make the point, particularly speaking to councillors uh, Sims and uh, Martin's points about competing and non-competing businesses, um, really in business, uh, all ships rise with the tide. Um, yes, there is a little bit of uh, some people cutting each other's lunch, but to be honest, at the moment, we have the cities around us cutting our lunch. The precincts around us, which are thriving, whether it be Prospect, um, whether it be uh, Queen Street um, uh, to the west, whether it be uh, Norwood, uh, whether it be Unley Road, um, these are all taking business away from us now. We need, we need a bit of hustle and bustle back in the city. Um, and if we can make that happen and bring some foot traffic, to North Adelaide, I would be very pleased to support that, um, whether it's a box park or something else. Of course, no one wants rusty shipping containers just lobbed there. I don't think that would be the intent of this in the slightest. Um, uh, and so let's just get it happening until we can realise on that asset um, and, uh, and start spending some money in my ward. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Kouros, would you like to sum up? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, basically, um, I just want to um, well, Councillor Moran is, uh, is not here at the moment, but uh, I am not looking at just dumping shipping containers on Adia O'Connell. That is not uh, my thought process at all. The whole idea is uh, to ensure that we bring uh, foot traffic to the area by creating something interesting for people to, from outside of North Adelaide to come into North Adelaide and uh, you know spend time in North Adelaide. I also want to be clear um, in regards to her response regarding the wine bar. It was a conversation, a private conversation we're having while throwing ideas in regards to what could go there. Um, it wasn't that I was you know, saying that's definitely what I want. Um, I actually thought that's something that should be interested in, actually. Um, but um, also um, to top that off, um, I uh, have a partner that is has got businesses in the area. He is very keen to see this happen, and he runs two restaurants. Um, he's also setting up a wine bar anyway down the street. He thought it would be a great idea to set something that up, set something like that up there. Also, I've spoken to a lot of the business traders down in O'Connell Street, and they love this idea, and they love the idea of bringing something to Adia O'Connell rather than having open park there that no one is using, no one is um, uh, come, no one is using um, to be able to, um, you know, bring something into the area that they can actually grow from. Thank you. Thank you. I will now ask you to vote on the motion. Thank you. Those in favour? Hands those against? Uh, th thank you. That uh, motion is carried. Thank you. Councillors, uh, item 15.3, Councillor Dr Donovan, motion on notice, waste management policy. 
Dr Jonathan. So I propose a motion that Council Administration prepares a report reviewing the waste management services provided by Council, prepares a waste management policy for Council consideration which provides options for waste services including organic city businesses um, and this policy would also address applicable fee for service models including reduce, reducing fees for strata groups. Thank you. Is there a second Deputy Lord Mayor? Uh, would you like to speak to your motion, Council? So Council has a strong position uh, in moving forward toward carbon neutrality and waste management. Waste currently accounts for approximately 5% of the City of Adelaide's carbon emissions and one of the measures of success that we've already stated in our carbon neutral Adelaide plan is increasing the recovery of food and organic waste by 50% by 2020 from commercial premises. So not only is this of course environmentally wise, it's also very wise forward planning from a financial perspective as the cost per unit for taking waste to landfill is approximately six to seven times more expensive than taking it for organics usage. Of particular interest to me in this report is a summary of any data that estimates current usage and uptake of organics collection and recycling collection within our domestic collection and also any data estimating the current amount of recycling and organics that is currently going to landfill and could be diverted both from our domestic collection and commercial, which of course is not within our remit at present. Um, so wherever that data is available, I'd particularly like to see that within the report. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Very briefly uh, to say, look, this is um, something that um, I've been long awaited for. So it's, thank you, uh, Dr. Donovan, Councillor uh, Donovan, for bringing this on board. I, I really hope that the CEO will take uh, into account um, also how we will be able to service uh, the growing number of apartments that are uh, in the city. Uh, obviously, as a result, because if we're able to reduce the strata cost of waste collection for some of those apartment blocks, we can potentially attract more people to live in the city and to be able to afford the ongoing cost of owning an apartment in the city of Adelaide. I think there's also there a business opportunity for the city, especially with city businesses. Uh, as we are all aware, city businesses at the moment do not have a rubbish collection uh, from the city of Adelaide, despite that they pay a lot of rates. They pay 80% of the rates in the city, but they don't have that service. Um, so it would be really important that we're able to provide some type of a service of at least on par to business at minimum. Some of the businesses have very similar needs to those of residents, but if they require more servicing, potentially there is a business opportunity for council uh, to be able to use its core business to derive a community service and to get a financial return. Um, so um, I think it's really important that this in, report, in this report we're able to encompass all of this. But also, if we're able to encompass our smart city technology, which we're already using in our bin collection, uh, and how that's delivering savings to the organisation, and how potentially rolling out more of those smart bins uh, can assist us in delivering better uh, waste management services for the city. So I'd ask councillors to support this. Thank you. Uh, do any other councillors wish to speak to the side of Yes, Lord, Martin? so um, I uh, welcome this uh, motion, uh, Lord Mayor. It is a matter that is close to my heart. I participated in the committee that lasted the duration of the last council with the Lord Mayor, uh, Martin Hasey, your predecessor. It was our desire, our keenness to see some uniform policy on waste collection, particularly for business in the city. It is a schizophrenic policy because the policy of providing waste collection to businesses was grandfathered some years ago. It is now possible for one business to have a complete waste collection service and the business next door to not have it and to have no entitlement. This is particularly concerning when it comes to organics, as has been mentioned. Many of the cafes and food businesses in this town have no service whatever and are casting their rubbish into red bins that are available, not necessarily on their premises, and in some instances into public waste bins. Now, all of this waste could be diverted to a recycling operation, uh, thus saving on landfill, saving cost to council, but also providing some uh, uh, um, meaningful service for business. And just as an example in North Adelaide, uh, there are three florists, all of them, to me that they are unable to do anything with their plant waste. They put it in a red bin. And we're talking about massive volumes of green waste that is suitable for recycling through our own recycling works. Additionally, uh, I would ask the administration to include in any study an examination of the facilities that are provided with public waste disposal bins. 
We had no means of discerning organic waste, recyclable waste, uh, or in fact landfill. And, and that is a screaming priority for this city. It, it's galling to travel around the world to see the way in which other countries, other cities deal with this very basic issue of recycling public waste. In this city, it is one bin for everything. And so, uh, again, I uh, commend Councillor Donovan for this proposal, and uh, I look forward to the administration providing that broad response that we require. Uh, councillors, I am mindful of the time. Councillor Sims. Uh, yeah, actually, with that in mind, I'll um, speak on another issue. Thank you, Lord. Councillor Kouros. I just want to commend uh, Dr. Um, Councillor Dr. Donovan uh, for bringing this forward as well. A lot of the businesses in North Adelaide have um, spoken to me as well in regards to their waste issues, and as Phil Martin has pointed it, that out. So I really would uh, agree with this uh, to be investigated. Thank you. Council, are there any other speakers? Councillor Donovan, would you like to sum up? Uh, I think it's it's uh, very uh, inspiring to see all of the support from other councillors around this, and it's it's a very obvious uh, direction for us to take given the carbon neutral policy. Um, one other thing that occurred to me as we were talking through this is, in terms of the strata management, just to consider where possible, and in many cases it's outside of the council's remit for larger developments, but where there is a possibility within smaller apartment blocks for us to look at um, some form of. Um, approval uh, process to go in place when buildings are being approved for development in terms of what they must include in some of the larger apartment blocks for uh, their waste management because at present a lot of the large apartment blocks simply have zero capacity to include any kind of green waste or organics waste so where it's within our remit to consider that within the report. I see furious nodding from uh, Director Mulcler there so. Otherwise summed up. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Um, if we could please now vote on the motion. <laughs> Those in favour? <coughs> Those against that motion is carried. Um, councillors, it is 8.30. We do have guests. Uh, we have one more motion on notice and then we have a couple of items that we need to address very quickly in confidence. Councillor Martin, motion on notice stadium. Uh, Lord Mayor, look, I have a proposition for my colleagues. If, if there's an indication of support, I'm prepared simply to allow them to go to the vote. Well, if I don't have to argue it, I won't. Um, so if I can have some indication. So I need a seconder. That's Councillor Sims to seconder. Do you want to go straight to the vote? Are we happy to no, go? No, apparently not. All right. Well, I need to uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Abiyat, for the indication that he's not supportive. Um, look, uh, this motion seeks to make public an extract, a uh, redacted version of the Golf Course Master Plan, which sets out our plan, the City of Adelaide, to make uh, the golf course of an international standard. Now, the, the motion is headed stadium, you'll notice on your papers, and, and, and that is because the golf course has become the focus of attention for sporting organisations for a possible stadium. It is, in fact, the subject of an illustration which was in the Adelaide Advertiser yesterday showing where a multi-purpose soccer, rugby, entertainment stadium might go uh, on the golf course on the corner of Montefiore and War Memorial Drive. It was, as uh, uh, one uh, resident remarked to me this morning, uh, remarkably similar to a toilet bowl. Um, but I'll leave that one there. Um, now, look, this scheming and planning that's going on within government to take parklands, and it is widespread, we all know that, is allowing, it is, is occurring, we're allowing it to occur in a vacuum. This council has a very good plan to develop the golf links, but it is secret. It is secret because there are some small parts of that plan which may be commercial in confidence. And while it's secret, this debate that's raging about using the City of Adelaide golf links, the international standard course that could be, the business that is owned by the City of Adelaide and which provides an income stream, this debate about how that land is going to be used is simply occurring without any challenge. The intention of this motion is simply to allow the administration to release 
that part of the study which can be released without harming any commercial incompetence information and allowing the debate to occur, to allow people to understand fully what's proposed by the City of Adelaide. Now, without that information, it's a very one-sided discussion. And so I, I urge members, uh, in the interests of ensuring that there is an informed discussion and debate, that people have all of the information that's available to support this motion. Did you want to speak to them? Sorry, I'll just ask the CEO to make a comment. Three, well, they're just for clarity purposes. The document we're talking about is a working document. It's not a document that's been endorsed by council. Um, ordinarily, um, we would seek for council to endorse a document before it is released, and we would determine the consultation process surrounding that. But the reason that we haven't done that is because at the moment it is a work in progress. Council has instructed the administration to do some more work and return to it. Um, I, I just needed to explain that the reason it hasn't been released is because it is still being worked on, that's all. Councillor Sims. May I just ask a question of the CEO? Um, was that document not presented to Council in confidence and endorsed? And the administration asked to undertake work in respect of a cultural aspect only? I don't believe it was endorsed. I'll ask Steve Matheson to respond. Uh, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, the item went to APLA. APLA didn't provide endorsement, but simply noted it, and it came through to Council. At the subsequent Council meeting, it wasn't endorsed by Council, and we were asked to go back and do the cultural heritage assessment, or a more detailed one. So the official status is that the document was endorsed or noted? It was noted by APLA. I don't recall if Council noted it. I think we simply didn't get it approved on that night, but I'd need to, to well, double check the exact for, for it to be an item on the agenda in the confidential section of Council, it either had to be endorsed or noted. It couldn't lie on the table. From recollection, and I would need to take this on notice for the component of this, I think, because my understanding is it was not endorsed expressly, and we were asked to go back and do additional cultural heritage, but I would need to confirm that and take it on notice. Councillor Sims, and then dealing. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, look, I um, support this motion, and I do want to commend uh, Councillor Martin. I'm doing a lot of commending of you tonight, yeah. Councillor Martin. I'm, I'm a fan of yours, but um, I'm a particularly a fan of yours because you're an advocate for the public's right to know. And uh, I do think information like this is important, particularly when we're having a debate about the future of our parklands. We did see a, um, a moment of uh, unity at the Council earlier tonight when there was a unanimous decision on, on Councillor Moran's motion. Um, and I thought that was very encouraging to see. Um, but it is clear there's a lot of community concern around the parklands. This is a, a, a proposal. It should be out in the public arena so that people can have an informed debate, particularly when um, we've got uh, a debate happening about what's going to be happening with our public space. So let's put it out in, uh, into the public so that uh, the community can have their say and we can continue the conversation. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, um, just in uh, mindful of time and mindful of the intent of what Councillor Martin is trying to achieve, I think the best way to deal with this until we get more advice from administration, because my understanding is we have to endorse a, um, a position as a council of a document that we agree to, then we could release that publicly. And with that in mind, I think the best way to deal with this is to have this motion lay on the table. We will deal then with the item. Um, as administration brings it back to us, we endorse it, then you can pick up the motion again and release information as we've endorsed the report. I believe that's the best way forward uh, for us to be able to move with this. Um, and I will move, in that case, Lord Mayor, that this motion be put, uh, sorry, this motion lay on the table for, at this time. I need a seconder. Yep. That's so, an amendment you would take. No, I've got to lay on the table. I'll lay on the table directly, that's okay. it. So, so Councillor Hyde has seconded? And seconded, yep. Yeah. yeah, so just in speaking to it. That, that's it. That's it? All right, done. And now we vote. Sorry, those who, sorry, those are in favour of laying on the table. Those against? That motion is carried. Division, please. 
uh, division has been called. Uh, those who voted for the motion to lay on the table, please rise. Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Abiad, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kara, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Kanal. Thank you. Um, members, uh, given that we have a few items left and the time is getting away from, from us and we have guests here, um, I am actually going to uh, call for the exclusion of public for one item, which is the CEO's verbal update, which should only take a few moments, a few minutes. Um, and I will also um, need a motion to adjourn and reconvene, which we can do uh, afterwards. So to begin with, I'll ask for a, um, a, motion, a mover and a second for a motion to exclude. Like, members, can I just ask, is there any appetite to just finish the agenda? There are three items to... There's nothing there. There's nothing. Okay. Let, let, us, let us go into confidence. We'll finish those items and then we'll leave. Three items. Could I have a mover and a second of to exclusion item 18.2.2, uh, .2, Councillor High and Councillor Knoll. Does anyone want to speak to the motion? No? Summed up? Thank you. Uh, those in favour? Thank you. Those against? That's carried. A mover and a second of item 18.2.2. Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde, uh, do you want to speak to the motion? Can we sum up, please? Thank you. Uh, please vote. Those in favour? Those against? That's carried. Can I have a mover and a second for item uh, to exclude the public for 18.2.3? Uh, Councillor Martin, second De uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, would you wish to speak to the motion? No. Uh, can I ask that it's summed up? There being no okay, show of hands, please. Those in favour? Those against? That's carried. Members of the gallery and staff, thank you for attendance. The meeting, uh, please, those members not associated with items 18.2.1, 18.2.2, and 18.2.3, please now leave the chamber while Council can.
the council can I have the doors unlocked and the meeting reopened to the public. Thank you. I declare the meeting closed as soon as those doors are open. Thank you.